In this video, I'm going to show you what customers go through when they're booking locations so you can better understand the user journey and how Airbnb is pushing listings at travelers. And then we're gonna go through the back end and show you what you can change to make your listing more interesting and then what you can also do to perform better to make your listing seem more interesting to Airbnb. This is totally going to break the algorithm and get you on the first page of Airbnb. And what I'm about to show you is going to show you how important being on the first page is. If you can rank high, Airbnb basically just prints you money and it's easy street from then on out. This data is going to blow your mind. Let's jump in. Welcome back, Airbnb family. I'm gonna cut right in and start showing you some screenshots that I collected of what Airbnb is doing now. You may not know, but Airbnb has completely changed the front end of their search experience for travelers. It used to be where they just automatically populated listings that they thought were interesting all over the world, but because of COVID, they've changed their strategy and this is highly significant. So please like the video and let's jump in. Here's screenshot number one. What Airbnb has now done is they have hidden that first splash page full of all of the listings across the world behind a button, which is I'm not sure where to go, right? And so they just give you a button to search the best of the best on Airbnb. But below that, Airbnb is pushing four tiles, which are all regional locations. And this is highly important. Airbnb has discovered that the data shows that since COVID, people are booking more staycations, more vacations that are between 50 miles and 500 miles from home. They are also pushing weekly stays, which I'm about to show you. So for the sake of this user experience, we're going to act like a guest and we're gonna push some buttons. Let's select Austin and go from there. What you'll first notice is that over here, there's going to be a vertical row of listings over map view. Now Airbnb is curated the best of the best of their listings in Austin, Superhost and Airbnb Plus listings with really high reviews, 4.97. 4.95. You notice there's not going to be any five star because all of these listings also have hundreds of reviews. They've got listings that have shown consistently high ratings and that's why they're there. The way that Airbnb pulls this off, if you'll notice, is their search parameters are any one week long stay, any month, April, May, June, or July. So they have a search experience set up for guests, potential travelers, that they just want to push you the best listings that are currently available in any one week range over the next four months. This allows Airbnb to create that first user experience that they wanna control, which is they wanna show the very best listings because they care about this window shopper aspect of Airbnb. They know that based on conversion percentages, which is typically under 2%, and what conversion percentage is, is the number of times that somebody clicks on a listing to the time that they book, there's only about 2% of the time that somebody clicks a listing and then ultimately books that listing. So with a low conversion percentage, people are window shopping before they finally commit to a stay. So Airbnb knows this and they wanna make sure that every single touch is going to be a positive touch with their best listings so that way people come back and look again. Because if they don't book today, they might book next week. Now, we're gonna play with these so that way you can start to see, I guess, more specific data, more practical data, because this is a very specific use case. But then if we start to search in Austin ourselves, we change it to a weekend maybe in May. What Airbnb does is they can still search for any weekend in May. You can choose May, June, July if you wanted to. And then as we become more specific, Airbnb is forced to choose from the inventory that is left over, which is really powerful stuff. Because now when people are actually looking for a stay for specific dates, Airbnb can't pull the best of the best because the best of the best is booked now. What this tells you is that Airbnb's most interesting listings, they go fast because Airbnb does really push them a lot. And that is the overarching theme for this whole video is that if you can become truly, truly interesting, according to Airbnb's algorithm, they will push you so much that you won't have to try a single day for your life ever again. Just maintain your ranking in the algorithm and it is truly easy street. So we're gonna try to get there. I'm gonna try to teach you how to get up here. There are a couple things that don't quite matter anymore to Airbnb. They have recently changed their strategy on what they think is interesting. One thing that is less important, but still matters, is wish lists. We're gonna talk about this soon, but a lot of you have been adding your like listings to wish lists and keep sharing them in groups, hoping that it's gonna push you up in rank. It doesn't really work the way that you think it works. So at the end of this video, we're nearer the end. I'm gonna actually really explain to you this very specific wish list hack that you can use. But Airbnb has also changed which thumbnails that they wanna promote. And this is a big one. Before COVID hit, Airbnb had a very unique 
but very predictable approach to what they pushed on the, like on the splash page of their platform. One out of every three photos had water in the photo, either a pool or an ocean or a river. Their photos were largely brown and blue, natural wood brown and blue, like water and sky. They curated this very specific kind of splash page. Now Airbnb is really now pushing more towards regional week-long stays because they are adapting to trends and you need to as well. Your listing will go through three potential phases within Airbnb's algorithm, the ramp up, the maintenance, and the underperformance phase. The ramp up phase is every single listing. Every new listing on the Airbnb platform gets a one month boost. Airbnb is doing this in good faith because they know that some listings have potential and if they don't boost all listings, the ones that really could make it to the top will never get there because Airbnb's interest algorithm so heavily favors well-performing listings that a new listing could really never keep up and would always end up settling for bronze or silver. So Airbnb's boost is to find the gold in all of the new listings. So what they do is they push your listing. So step one of having a high performing listing is to do good during the launch phase. Airbnb defines a good launch by view velocity and like velocity, which would be wish lists. Now we're gonna explain the mechanics of that later, but in this phase, yes, wish lists matter. So if you can get a lot of eyeballs in your listing, get it shared a lot, promote it on social media, and get people to add it to their wish lists, this will increase the rate at which people are viewing and favoriting your listing, which is the most initial part of what Airbnb is looking for in their algorithm, because they know that views ultimately lead to bookings. So they're going to start to push you more as you get views. Outside of promoting your listing and trying to hack the wish list, like share for share kind of thing, there are ways to increase your views, which is through your thumbnails, your title, your description. Now, what I recommend is that when you pick your thumbnail, you pick something that's well lit, has good balance, has some contrast in the photo, draws the eye. Now, here's a hack that I teach my students. Go and search in an area. If you got a listing up, go and search in an area and find your listing in that vertical row, right, to the, to the side. And when you see your photo next to your competitor's photos, see how much your photo jumps out compared to your competitors. If you're not completely satisfied, you can actually go over your thumbnail and click, and it will actually move your thumbnail photo and flip through your photo reel without ever opening the listing. This is going to matter later too, but what you can do is flip through your photos and find a photo that you think is the best performing thumbnail against your immediate competition. Now your photo would change depending on who your competition is. This is extremely important. The idea of contrast. It's like a reverse game of where's Waldo. If everyone's photos are blue and white, you want something maybe has some orange or some red or some purple. You want some contrast. You want to be different. And one of my friends, his listing is called Queen's Landing. We did a previous video about that listing. And I've recommended that he takes one of his photos that is completely red, like a red room, and make that his thumbnail just to see if it drives views. For now, he's keeping his main photo, but his main photo is largely too similar. At a, when the photo is small, it's too similar in color and layout to his competitors, but the red room one would really pop and could drive more clicks. In addition, when you write your title, you don't wanna say anything just overly obvious. If you have a three bedroom house, don't write that it's a three bedroom. You're wasting valuable real estate on obvious information that Airbnb already shows inside of your listing summary. So what I would do is use a strong adjective. If you have a high rise apartment with a king bed, somewhere like downtown Dallas here, you could say powerful king bed suite or extravagant king bed suite or luxurious or posh or something like that. Try to pick a adjective and then something that makes your space worth looking at. You should allude to stuff that they will find in the photos and that they know they could find in the photos if they want more information. So you could say luxurious king bed suite with hot tub right? Or luxurious king bed suite with cigar lounge, right? They want to see the hot tub. They want to see the cigar lounge. This is good stuff to put in there. It's not overly obvious when somebody's searching because their parameters might've been, I'm looking for an entire place, instant book, five people, but they weren't able to select king bed. There's not a, a button for that. People aren't necessarily looking for a hot tub. But when they find out there is one, they want to see it. There's no button for cigar lounge, right? So put some stuff that encourages the click so people will go through your photo reel. The description should be written in a way that is talking to them, but in a storytelling kind of way. Future planning, predicting their experience. At our king bed suite, you'll first arrive to a beautiful and bright, modernly decorated lobby with vaulted ceilings and be greeted by a professional and smiling concierge who will let you up to the 30th floor so you can enjoy the downtown views of Dallas in a luxurious, private, some form of space. And when you're finally ready to tuck into bed, you will sink into a 14 inch 
Euro top mattress with 1000 count Egyptian cotton thread bed sheets and pillows that cost more than my son's college education, something like that. And then continue to write in a flavorful and fun and easy to read, but high momentum captivating way. And that is really what we're trying to do once we get the click. Once we have a click on our listing, Airbnb wants to see engagement because Airbnb tracks a listing just like any other website. And if somebody clicked on your listing and bounced off really quickly, that's actually bad data. They don't wanna see that. They wanna see somebody land on the listing and then play around. They wanna see you flip through photos. They wanna see you click the drop down to read the rest of the description. They wanna see you play with the calendar. Airbnb is constantly looking for data to support that if somebody looks at 10 or 12 photos that they're more likely to buy, something like that. So the first thing you need to do is make sure that the first five photos of your listing look wonderfully well all together. That first hero photo that you just gamed to be good, that's gonna be one. But the other four should be an all encompassing, kind of like a snapshot, a collage of your place. And the reason why is if somebody doesn't click through your photo reel and they start to scroll, that very first impression on the desktop will include five photos. It'll include your hero photo and then four other photos next to it. And you wanna give the best first impression to decrease the bounce rate and to encourage people to start to go through the description, but also the better your first five photos, the more curiosity there's gonna be and they're more likely to start clicking through your listing photos. Six out of 10 travelers, that's the very first thing that they do when they engage with an Airbnb listing is they click through photos. Remember that. I like to call this metric hang time. If someone's hanging around on your listing and clicking around, Airbnb will push your listing because they think that it is truly interesting. This brings us into the second phase of Airbnb's interest algorithm, which is your bookings. Views are great, but if you get zero bookings, your occupancy will never prove that you're interesting. So Airbnb's initial one month boost is to give you the views that you need to get occupancy. And then more important than anything else is that you maintain a high percentage of occupancy on the Airbnb platform. It is true that if you're on VRBO and other listings, Airbnb will slightly cap you because you're no longer getting 100% occupancy on Airbnb, you're getting occupancy somewhere else. And even though you're interesting, you're not loyal. So Airbnb doesn't reward being on multi-platform. They don't completely kill you because there's other factors in the algorithm like your review count, your review average, and all this other data, but they initially want to see that your occupancy shoots up. So all listings when they're brand new should go on Airbnb first, and this is good for you anyway, because VRBO, a lot of the listing bookings are done farther into the future. So you can ramp up on the algorithm with Airbnb the first month with last minute bookings and then add VRBO in. And I don't think there's any harm or foul in that. So it should be a good strategy for you. To achieve this, you will need pricing strategy and you will need to understand the trade-off that's made between prices and booking. If you drop your rates enough last minute, you will get last minute bookings. And you don't need to give away the farm necessarily the first three or four days you could go without bookings for the first three, four or five days. Airbnb does give you a month to pull this off. Now it's going to be important that you do have a high percentage of occupancy for like at least a trailing 10 or 14 days before your first month is over because you just wanna make sure that Airbnb sees that you are really getting bookings. And if you're trailing 14 days is 100% occupied, that's a really safe space to be in. So if you're trying to get booked today, you might need to slash your price. If you have a house where your average rate is going to be $300 a night, two months from now, you might need to slash it 40 or 60% to get a booking in five or six days. To get a booking today, you might need to slash it 80%, which is no fun, but if you really want to get 100% occupancy for the sake of the algorithm, the question is, is what are you really willing to do to max out your algorithm boost here? And now, now that you have occupancy, you have views, you got the hang time, everything's going well, Airbnb wants to see your reviews. They wanna see high reviews, they wanna see consistent reviews. So if you get 500 five-star reviews and 10 one-star reviews, that's great overall, but it shows a danger. The presence of one-star reviews is probably the worst thing you can get in your review count. Aside from having a consistently medium or consistently low review count, having spikes of one-star reviews is going to be bad for the algorithm. So try to prioritize avoiding one-star reviews at all costs and try to avoid two-star reviews at all costs, which means that if you need to save the day and give somebody concession to prevent them from leaving a scathing retaliatory review, then do so. There's also ways to get reviews removed. And I've had to do some really deep dive consulting with my students to get some stuff removed, but it has worked. So there is a method and a path for this here. So, you know, don't be discouraged about like a negative review or two. 
it is possible to manage them if they are unjust. But the last thing you want is a real two-star or one-star review that you cannot get removed because it was a legitimate concern. So getting a bunch of five-star reviews and 4.5-star reviews is great, but avoid the one-stars. Over time, Airbnb is gonna see 10, 20, 30 reviews. And if your average is really high, great. And again, if you have a 4.5-star average because you get a lot of 4.5s, that's better than having a 4.5-star average because you have fives and ones. That's what I'm getting at. At this point, you should be high in the algorithm. The more reviews you get, the more bookings you get, the better the consistency, the more you get pushed and pushed and pushed. Amenities will be important too. I do believe that Airbnb is pushing specific amenities. And we've shown this in a previous video about Airbnb's new feature updates. One thing that they've done with the front end is that if you're searching in a city like Dallas or you're searching in an area like Winter Park, Colorado, the white bubbles at the top where you can choose specific amenities that you wanna to add to your search, like filter parameters, they change per city. Here in Dallas, they might be looking for free parking, right? But in Winter Park, Colorado, they might be looking for a hot tub, right? So those things will pop up in different areas. Um, Airbnb's actually built this out, they're super proud of it, but this shows where they're going with their vision. So now let's say your listing fell off of the algorithm, right? You fell out the back end. There's some things that you can do to get back on track. And it is difficult to get back into the top when you've kind of fallen from grace per se. A lot of times you fall off of Airbnb's interest algorithm because you've had a run of bad reviews, right? Or you've had a run of like not accepting bookings or something of the sort, or you had a run of like no occupancy. Like you didn't lower your prices enough and you went 10 or 15 days in a row without a booking when you were available. That's really rough. So in order to get back on track, what I recommend you do is you snooze your listing. Snooze it for just a little while. While it is snoozed, change your title, your description, your thumbnail, just kind of mix up your listing and then reactivate it. Then go into your calendar and start changing prices. Drop prices to get in a booking immediately today, get a booking immediately tomorrow and try to get a ton of bookings. One, 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 one. If you can get a lot of little bookings, you can start to get a high rate of better reviews. And what you really need to do is follow up with these guests to ask for a good review and ask every single guest, what can I do to earn your five-star review today? Every single person. Make it your North Star, which is getting a lot of five-star reviews. Then also push your listing on social media. Be like, hey guys, um, I'm trying to get my listing back high on the algorithm and I need you guys to wish list me, please. So after you've snoozed it, changed some things, start to push your listing with low prices and really like almost begging for five-star reviews, but by begging, by offering deliver maximum value and then asking people to wish list your place, what wishlist does is it causes a short-term increase in, in views and in, in pushing your listing based on the rate at which people are liking it. There is no more data anywhere to show that being wishlisted 100 times will permanently increase your rank as opposed to being wishlisted 70. But what we can presume based on how Airbnb's front end works is that if you all of a sudden get a spike of like people adding your listing to a wishlist, that there's temporary interest in your listing and Airbnb will temporarily boost your listing in rank, which can then allow you to get these bookings that you're trying to get at a low price so you can get your calendar full. A full calendar beats a wish list strategy because a full calendar maintains itself where it's impossible to get tens of thousands of people to constantly grind you through wish lists. It's just, it's not sustainable, but 100% occupancy or near 100% occupancy actually is. Now, if none of this works and you are having a hard time with the algorithm and you're just getting dogged, you should actually cancel that listing. You should go into your place and you should materially change the listing. Make a completely new product so that way you can create a new listing altogether. Absent of past reviews, paint the walls, different furniture, different theme, and then recreate a brand new listing from scratch that is a different product, different professional photos, different altogether, and start from scratch. And hopefully you'll do better the second time. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. Thank you so much for watching this video and share it with your host friends. This is the kind of stuff that we all need, right? Thank you guys, and I'll see you on the other side. Bye.